Charlotte Bronte thought that Jane Austen's heroine was really rather insipid. In Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte created a heroine much more to her own taste. Passionate, fiery, independent. Jane calls herself poor and obscure, plain and little, but she's afraid of nothing. The book was a sensation when it was published because the heroine defies Victorian ideas of ladylike behaviour. But it's this unconventionality that's ensured the novel's lasting appeal. The novel's been adapted many times, and I went to the set of the latest BBC version. Action. Oh, there you are. This features Toby Stevens playing Mr. Rochester and newcomer Ruth Wilson playing Jane Eyre. I took it with me to Lowood. And now? Now, I think it can go here very well. Now, Monsieur, if we're very lucky, we might see some dragonflies. Did I ever tell you of my travels in the Blue Mountains of Mongolia? <laughs> no? And you can tell me of your travels in the black and gloomy forest. Writer Sandy Welch is particularly struck by Jane Eyre's independence of spirit. Jane is a, is a very modern character, even if you faithfully take everything from the book. I mean, she's a woman who's decided to earn her own living. Yeah. Um, she's very keen to do that. She, whenever she's in trouble, which is often, she thinks, well, I'll just go and I'll advertise and I'll... Um, I'll make some money that way. <laughs> and that is a very modern feeling. I think every, everybody in the 20, 21st century can uh, relate to that. My feeling on rereading Jane Eyre was what a powerful character she is. It's no exaggeration to call her an inspiration. 41, take one. Uh, camera, action. You must imagine a restaurant, no, a dance hall. There isn't really a meeting place. There isn't really a, a word for this sort of place. Many respectable people come here at night to socialize. You must think of brilliant reds and pinks. And how do you feel about playing a character who keeps describing herself as poor and obscure, plain and little? You know, she's always so, she's so down on her appearance. Yeah. I, I don't know, I think there's so many girls that... Because she's only a teenager as well in this. Mm. She's only 18, 19 um, to begin with. And um, a lot of girls feel like that. I think it's quite a sort of common yeah. problem amongst girls. I felt like that, yeah. And, I mean, there's moments in this where she's looking at herself in the mirror and sort of you're revolting or you're just, you're, you know, sort of angry at herself mm. for thinking that someone could like her or fancy mm. her. So it's, I think it's, um, it's so relevant to that yeah. modern day. I mean, Jane is a fantastically popular mm. heroine and enduringly popular since she first appeared in the 1840s. But do you think she's a, do you think she's a good role model? I think she's a fantastic role model because mm. she's so strong, so determined... Um, but also is incredibly caring and passionate about others and mm. so I don't know, she's I think she's fantastic, I wish I was more like her really but <laughs> I'm not <laughs> One of the reasons Jane Eyre feels so contemporary is that she's not just waiting around to get married Jane Eyre is the first romantic heroine who has a job. In Victorian England, there were no professions open to women. Women couldn't become doctors, they couldn't become lawyers, they certainly couldn't become ministers of religion. They had no rights at all. Um, their position was very similar to that of women in many countries in the developing world now. One of the very few professions open to women at the time was that of governess or private tutor, which is what Jane Eyre does in Charlotte Bronte's novel. We're talking of governesses, Lady Ingram. Oh, don't mention them. I'm so glad that Blanche and Mary have no longer any need for them. Governesses are a nuisance, all of them. As middle-class women who had to earn their own living, governesses occupied an ambiguous social position. 
was extraordinarily hard to be a governess because to be a governess you had to have a proper gentlewoman's education. So you had to be able to teach English, grammar, history, French, probably music, all the accomplishments. You had to be able to teach those things. To teach those things you had to be educated yourself. So you are of a certain class. The women of course are very beautiful. But being educated was no protection if you were a woman without husband or fortune. But dangerous. Stop that noise. I'll send you to school in the morning. How much did you have to think about how to describe the kind of the real lack of options there were for women like Jane, I mean, to be a governess? Um, well, we do explore that quite a lot because the, in the second episode there's a lot of house party where Rochester suddenly invites all these people. And this world they've created is suddenly invaded by mm. people who look down on her as a governess. And she's reminded of her status in the outside world. Jane is a different kind of character. She, uh, you could almost argue, is an oppressed woman. Jane Eyre starts out small, pale, not beautiful, not rich. Uh, she's got nothing except her strength of character and her intelligence to get her through. I think Jane was a proto-feminist, and I didn't realise it as a teenager reading the book, but I, I picked up on it subsequently. She was quite clear that she wanted to be autonomous and financially independent. She didn't want to be a kept woman. She rated herself quite highly, not in an immodest way, but in a just sense of self-worth. It's hard to imagine now just how shocking the story of Jane Eyre's passionate independence was to readers in 1848. Even Mrs. Gaskell, who was Charlotte Bronte's great friend and biographer, forbade her daughter to read the novel until she was 20. Jane Eyre shocked Victorians because of her personality. She just simply had too much ego. She wasn't docile, she wasn't feminine and dutiful, she was very self-assertive, and she also expressed the fact that she had passions and she had erotic feelings, um, and that was a complete no-no in that prudish Victorian climate. Readers were shocked and excited, not just by the story of Jane's brush with bigamy, and the pyromaniac, mad woman in the attic, but by proto-feminist opinions like these. Millions are condemned to a stiller doom than mine, and millions are in silent revolt against their lot. Women are supposed to be very calm, generally, but women feel just as men feel. They need exercise for their faculties and a field for their efforts as much as their brothers do. They suffer from too rigid a restraint, too absolute a stagnation, precisely as men would suffer. And it is narrow-minded in their more privileged fellow creatures to say that they ought to confine themselves to making puddings and knitting stockings, to playing on the piano and embroidering bags. Well, when Jane Eyre came out, it was, of course, written under a male pseudonym. Nobody knew that it was by a woman. Um, it was an immediate bestseller, because nobody had read anything quite so exciting for a very long time. Charlotte wanted the book to be judged on its writing. She didn't want it to be judged by whether the author was a man or a woman. Because a certain type of fiction was expected of women of that day, and Charlotte already knew that this book was not going to fit into the usual types of fiction of that time. 
as soon as critics began to suspect that the author was in fact a woman, there was a huge moral backlash against it um, because it was considered to be utterly unfeminine. Um, it didn't conform to the, the docile idea of what a woman at that period should be.